Hey guys, it's Carl. Super quick video on the iPhone 14 Plus, as this had a later embargo than the rest of the iPhone products that we've had, maybe for the past two weeks. So we of course have the standard 14, 14 Pro, and the 14 Pro Max. All of which I've used, I'll leave videos linked up this way, but the Plus model is the one that took a bit longer to come out. You can see that it has the same box design as the 14. The only thing different here is the screen size and of course the battery. So we'll quickly do a very quick unboxing. I also have a case here that I wanna test uh, because it's a similar size to some other phones. And you can see the two little pull tabs on the back and up comes the box. And I know that I did a separate vid on all of the iPhone 14 colors, but in case this is the first time you're seeing this purple colorway, here it is in all of its glory. It is very, very muted, very pastel-y. And of course the aluminum trim around the outside, that is different from the 14 Pro line, which is all stainless steel. And as this phone is pretty much identical to the 14 line, it has the same colorways and I can name them off if I remember. So we have Midnight Starlight, Product Red, blue, and of course this last one in purple. Inside of the rest of the box, exact same stuff, the same user manuals, warranty info, SIM card tool. As I'm up here in Canada, this one actually still has a SIM card slot. And if you are in the US, this entire side will just be blank. So if you wanna buy um, pirated Canadian iPhones off me, let me know and we can set up some illegal business uh, going on. We also have a USB-C to lightning cable. Once again, same, same. We still are not making that switch to USB-C. We'll have to probably wait once again till next year. White plastic comes off and generally the setup process for all iPhones is pretty similar. We're greeted by a nice little hello, bonjour. And I'm just gonna set this up as a brand new iPhone. And as this boots up, I quickly just want to pull across some models off to the side. So right now I've got the 14 versus the 14 plus, and you can see here the clear size difference. And we've got 6.1 inches over on the 14 and 6.7 on the 14 plus. So it's the exact same thinness and you can see on the front of the displays, other than that screen size, we have the same notch up top. And the key big difference between this and the 14 Pro Max, which I have, they technically have the exact same screen size. So like I mentioned, 6.7 inches, obviously over on the Pro Max, that's where you have Dynamic Island, whereas on the 14 Plus, it's the same good old notch. Both serve the same purposes. You won't live or die with having Dynamic Island, but it's just one of the key differentiators. Also, for some strange reason, even though they have the same display, there is some weird difference going on in terms of the overall I guess width in dimensions, I can actually tell right off of the bat that the 14 plus is slightly thinner, but on the flip side, it's actually slightly taller, just around half a millimeter, very hard to tell, and slightly wider as well. If anyone knows uh, the reasoning behind the madness for Apple for creating uh, two different sizes, let me know. But I will take out the case. I'll try to fit them on both, even though technically the 14 Pro Max has the larger camera cutout. And you can actually see here, I have the lilac case, so the the purple on purple should look pretty good. And you can see here that fits nicely into place, the case little indication uh, which matches the colorway as well. So that obviously fits. And if I try to transfer it over, like I mentioned that camera cutout because we have the larger sensors or I guess the three different cameras on the Pro Max, that obviously won't fit. But even on the bottom, it does feel a bit thicker. So I don't think it would fit anyway. So maybe the reason for that is Apple wants you to buy different accessories, different cases, it makes sense. But remember these cost $60 for a piece of silicone, so they are expensive. You do have different options. Check out dbrand, for example. I know that they're slightly thicker in protection and they just provide a couple more customization options. But back to the 14 Plus. Like I mentioned, the display is the big thing that's changing here. So 6.7 inches, it has the same nip brightness, 800, and peak nip brightness of 1200. Still stuck at 60 hertz, so it doesn't have pro motion like we have over on the pro models. And that's pretty much the key big differences. You have the same dual camera system, so 12 megapixel sensors, technically better than the 13 line, but 
in reality, they take pretty much the same photos. Maybe in low light, I saw the smallest little upgrade. But the big thing here is the battery. So Apple fully claims this on their website. This is the best battery across the 14 lineup, and that's including the 14 Pro Max, which I've used as my daily. And if I look back at my battery usage here over, say, the past 24 hours, I was just on my phone for close to eight and a half hours. My average screen on time is around six and a half hours. So I'm clearly on this device every day, all day, and I sadly have to charge this up by the end of the day, especially if I'm on over for seven hours. And you can see in my battery usage, the screen on time or the display slash screen takes around 7% of battery. And a lot of that has to do with this, which is the always on display, which does drain quite a bit because I've turned this off. Battery life has improved, but sadly having this nice new feature does drain some of the battery life. And unfortunately, this is inferior to the 13 Pro Max, which had some of the best battery life across a smartphone. So if anything, this has kind of regressed a bit. And obviously, Apple knows that. And that's why they've made that claim that the 14 Plus has the best battery life across any device this year. So that's obviously good to have. So now we have the entire 14 lineup here. So we've got the 14, 14 Plus, the 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max. And you can kind of see there used to be this one little guy that lived off to the side that was either the 13 mini or the 12 mini, which has sadly now been phased out. So these are the only options that you can get. Pricing wise, they remain the same. So this cost $7.99 for of course the base entry level 14. $100 more gets you the 14 plus. That's $1,250 Canadian. I know that our Canadian dollar has just been tanking lately. So that is unfortunate. And of course, more money for the pro models. It's that same $100 price jump between the different sizes. Unfortunately for the mini RIP to you, I know that it had a huge cult following, but unfortunately it had just the worst battery life across the line as it was so small. I'm sure Apple does their numbers correctly and they knew how many people purchased the regular size and the trend in smartphones is generally going towards larger displays. Um, we've seen that since the OG iPhone. You can imagine uh, how large this phone would have been if this uh, came out um, back, what, 12, 13 years ago? 15 years from a quick little Google check. So yeah, it's crazy to see the size of displays kind of moving up. So I totally think that the 14 plus makes sense. And who's this phone technically for if you don't need the pro features of the pro model. So if you don't need that 48 megapixel sensor, if you don't need the telephoto lens, if you don't need pro motion, if you don't want to pay that extra premium for that a 16 bionic chip, because honestly in performance, all of these phones pretty much perform the exact same, maybe slightly quicker loading times on the Pro models. Obviously, I'm not uh, editing 4K footage. I leave that to my computers. So if you are playing games, you want a larger display. If you watch a lot of content, this is great for media consumption. Or if you want that extra battery life, or if you just struggle to see icons and stuff um, on your phone. I know that my parents would love a larger phone because they um, yeah, sometimes struggle to see what's on their classic iPhone. I think that's the main reasons for the plus. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are. Which model would you get across the range now that uh, we have them all? Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this vid. If you have any other questions, let me know. I'll answer them down below in the comments. But currently, my daily still remains the 14 Pro Max. Then I would probably go in this exact order. So I hope you guys enjoyed this vid and I will catch the rest of you in one of my next ones. Peace.